Hello everyone. I hope that you're doing good today. It is Tuesday and uh, I'm about ready to run some more errands. So I thought that I would uh, do my YouTube channel today and get it done with. Um, I am going to do something different since we finished Colossians yesterday. I'm going to do the book of Jonah. Um, and so um, I, I really like the book of Jonah. I think it has some really good um, you know, examples in it and lessons from God, and I thought it would be a nice switch. So I will start in chapter one of Jonah. So Jonah runs from the Lord. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked the people are. So stopping there, the Lord, uh, of course, knows everything that's going on everywhere, but he wants to warn these people. Why does he want to warn them? They're not Jewish. They're not his chosen people. Um, in fact, the Ninevites were a very wicked people, a very harsh and cruel people. But because God loves them and he wants to give them a chance to repent, and this is really what the whole book of Jonah is about. In verse 3, it says, But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. This is comical in itself, and I, I think a lot of us read this and kind of chuckle because you can never escape the Lord, period. It just is not ever going to happen. The God uh, of the, the Lord of the universe um, basically is omnipresent, okay? Omnipowerful, omniscient. He knows everything. Um, he's everywhere at all times. He is not inhabiting a tree, but he's everywhere at all times. He knows what is going on. Um, he's all powerful. And to try to think that you're going to run from the Lord is um, comical. But we have all done that before too. Because really we may not have physically tried to like run off and escape. And we may have. But, you know, spiritually there's times when the Lord tells us to do something and we don't do it. We go in another direction we go off and do something else, and we're really doing what Jonah has done. So we can't be too harsh on Jonah. So continuing in four, but the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. <clears throat> Think about this. They didn't have any kind of ships that we have today. You know, um, ours are, you know, really strong, powerful ships, but the Lord could destroy them if he wanted to. Also, as we know, there are ships to this day that still sank, okay? Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their, God, to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. So these are non-believers. These are pagans who have their own gods, okay? But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at a time like this? <clears throat> he shouted, get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. So each one of them probably had their own gods, and uh, which we know are nothing. And that um, they're powerless. The storm didn't change nothing changed so he's telling him get up and pray to your god and see if anything happens then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused the terrible storm when they did this the lots identified jonah as the culprit so basically they're doing kind of a you know casting lots and expecting the lot to go and give the answer. God Almighty caused the lot to fall to Jonah because he is in perfect control of everything. 
He has a defined outcome that he wants and his will will not be thwarted. So he caused the lot to fall on Jonah, who was the one to blame. Why has this awful storm come down on us? They demanded. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? Jonah answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the land. Okay, so he's identifying him. Uh, so basically, he's identifying God is the God of heaven, basically who made everything, okay? Remember, pagan gods a lot of times were the God of fertility or the God of the harvest or whatever, like one little entity is what they thought. He's telling him he is God over all, okay? The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for they had already told them he was, he, for he had already told them he was on the run. He was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it? They groaned. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to stop the storm? Throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and it will become calm again. I know that this terrible storm is all my fault. <clears throat> Instead, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to land. But the stormy sea was too violent for them and they couldn't make it. So the reasoning behind them of ignoring his uh you know, request to throw him overboard, they were probably fearing the Lord thinking, oh, well, maybe that he'll harm us more if we throw this guy overboard. So they thought, well, let's just try to roll harder and get out of this ourselves. Well, obviously that did not work and it became more violent. Okay. So they then said, they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God, Oh, Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin and don't hold us responsible for his death. Oh, Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for your own good reasons. So <clears throat> these are not non-religious people. They are religious in their own right. They're just worshiping, um, you know, false gods which the Bible says actually in different parts of the Bible that they are demons. They don't realize this, but anytime you worship a false god, it's, you're actually worshiping, worshiping a demon because demons put these ideas in men's mind to make these gods, to carve these gods, to make these idols and to attribute them power, okay? So then the sailors picked Jonah up and they threw him into the raging sea and the storm stopped at once the sailors were awestruck by the lord's great power and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him stopping there so he revealed who he is he is the god of he proved he was the god of the land sea and heavens and he stopped the violent storm the raging seas and remember jesus did this in the boat too and they were awestruck and so uh, then notice that they, they did sacrifices. And by the way, even pagan uh, religions, they did sacrifices. Sacrifices was a normal thing. And, uh, but they vowed instead to serve him. Now, that doesn't mean that specifically maybe that they were just going to serve the Lord. And maybe it did. Maybe some of those men on those ships became believers in the Lord God Almighty. And they quit serving their gods because they had a visible example of his power. Some people will say, oh, I'm going to serve him too, but all my other gods. And so, um, you know, there's other religions to this day that have many gods and then they'll hear about jesus and go oh yeah I'm, i'll serve him too but they add him to their gods that cannot be it can only be the lord jesus christ because he is the only true god and then the last verse and i'm finishing for the first chapter now the lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow jonah and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. <clears throat> so that's the end of it. So here again, we show that the Lord is the God of the sea. Remember what he said, land, sea, heaven. 
So who does he control? He controls the animals in the sea. He can make them do whatever he wants. So this he directed this large fish. It doesn't say that it was a whale. Um, you know, it could have been or it could have been some other massive fish at that time. We know that many have died off. Uh, but he provided a large fish for him to, you know, swallow Jonah. And by the way, if you look up uh, information about whales, we'll just say, and one what they have found in their stomach, there's a huge pocket of air and their ribs are massive fish, okay? And a lot of them filter, you know, um, the little microorganisms or whatever through their gills and other ones eat but there is a lot of space in there and so it is very uh you know people have kind of said oh well that's probably not possible and actually it is there's there's been found a whole bunch of things inside of whales um so first of all nothing's impossible for god and god provided this fish he directed this whole entire thing you know from him getting on the ship and guess what now these men know and have heard about the lord and who he is okay and so and they said they worshiped him and they vowed to worship him and then he is now teaching jonah lesson you cannot run from me so there's lessons throughout all of this and the lesson should be for us if god wants us to do something we should do it and obey so we don't have to go through all these hardships for not doing it and always look for an opportunity to tell people who do not know the lord about him and uh you know ask the lord and and, and pray to him like what what should i say to them and he will give you the words ask him to speak through you uh, so i will continue with the next chapter tomorrow i hope you have a good day god bless